Hey y'all, I'm here. So, continuing my series on how to get rid of different systemd components without ever talking about why, I'm going to be talking about one way to get rid of systemd temp files. Now, in a perfect world, this would be a video about how to just not need a temp files processor, because at least in my opinion, parts of the temp files spec are genuinely insane, but I don't really know a good way around that that I would actually be able to make a video on. Best way I know of at this point is to just make a local repo, which that'll still be involved with this version, but optionally. Yeah, so make the local repo, copy over every ebuild that includes a dependency on temp files, patch it to remove that dependency, which the exact changes you need to make will vary from ebuild to ebuild, and just kind of do that until nothing depends on it, and you can just remove it with the depth clean. Problem with making a video on that is that I can't reasonably show how to patch everything in the repos that depends on temp files like that. So until I find a better way to remove it, I'm just going to talk about how to unmask open temp files and optionally how to patch it to be hopefully less vulnerable. Now, if you either don't read Gentoo News or haven't been reading it for long enough to remember the switch to systemd temp files, you may be wondering what open temp files is. Well, what it is, is dead. So, open temp files is a temp files processor written in POSIX shell, and that, combined with the temp file spec, led to a couple CVEs that can't really be fixed without either a total rewrite or writing some utilities in C, which, as pointed out here, systemd temp files is already written in C, so yeah, the devs don't really see much point in a rewrite. So the CVEs in question, for whatever reason, the temp file spec includes a way to just recursively change ownership of a directory, because that's always a good idea. So if you have a temp files entry with this recursive ownership change, then create a symlink under that directory to, in this example, slash etsy slash password, but really just anything that should not be owned by a user. And also note the dollar sign, you don't need root to do this. And then if you restart this boot level service and don't care that it's throwing you a warning, which this bit does require root. Then you get ownership of whatever you just simlinked to. Then the person who found that also noticed that you could do something similar with D to create a directory and maybe F, which I think makes a file. So basically you just remove whatever file or directory it makes, replace it with a malicious symlink. Then again, restart this boot level service that OpenRC 
actively warns you is a bad idea. And ownership change. So between these warnings and just some aspects of default Gen 2 settings, at least one dev on the mailing list considers it not really a security issue, aside from the fact that it's abandonware. So initially it was getting masked for the CVEs. Now it's just getting masked because it's not maintained. And I am going to link to all of these in the description so you can read through them a bit more before deciding whether you hate System D enough to go this route. So if after seeing all this you still want to switch to open temp files, then first step is going to be unmasking it. So just as root point a text editor to slash etsy slash portage slash profile slash package dot mask and just add a line like this minus sysapp slash open temp files then just save and quit and if you don't want my guess at trying to mitigate this stuff and if you're just kind of content with how it is then you can just emerge open temp files and it'll install just fine. And if you do want to tweak things just to try and be a bit less vulnerable, I'm going to preface this by saying that this is just my best guess at how to mitigate these based on my understanding of the CVEs, so take all of this with a grain of salt. But yeah, if you want to patch it, go to GitHub, openrc slash open temp files. I wouldn't recommend grabbing just whatever is newest here because versions newer than 0.2 are apparently horribly buggy. So instead, go to releases, tags, then for 0.2 you can get the zip or the tarball. I grabbed the tarball, so that's what I'm going to be showing the extraction command for. If you go for the zip, I'm just going to trust that you know how to unzip it. So once you grab whichever, just cd into wherever you saved it. If you got the tarball, tar, x for extract, v for verbose, f for file. And just point it at the tarball. Then cd into the resulting directory. And just to make it easier to make a patch file later, set it up as a git repo, so git init. It'll probably give this warning about default branch names. You can just ignore that. Then git add dot, just to add everything in the current directory to this new git repo. And if you don't already have like a global git identity set, then just git config. You can add dash dash global if you want to set it globally. And if you're not going for global, or even if you are, as long as this isn't going to be going to like GitHub or GitLab or wherever at any point, then 
you can just put whatever for both of these. So user.name, if you are going to upload this to a Git service eventually, you should put your actual name, or at least what you go by there. If this is just going to stay local, then you can put basically whatever. Then the other thing you'll need to set up is user.email. Same deal, you can include global if you want. If this is gonna go on GitHub or not a bug or wherever at some point, then make sure that this email address is actually tied to your account. If it's just local, there is absolutely nothing validating this, so you can just put whatever you want. Then once that's set up, you can just get commit-m whatever message. I'm just gonna go with the standard first commit. If you're curious, you can just look at git log and see that there's now one commit, first commit, from whatever name and email address you put. So now for the actual changes. There are three files here that we're going to be touching. OpenRC slash opentempfilesdev.initd openrc slash open temp files setup dot init d and then optionally temp files itself. It's gonna start with the init script. So just pointing a text editor to openrc slash open temp files dev dot init d and the goal here is to just make it so that if you try and call restart, it won't actually restart the service. So you would think this would just be making like a restart function like this. And that would be a reasonable thought. But that's not how this works. So just somewhere toward the top, just add a little conditional here, where you check if the variable rc underscore cmd is equal to restart. Then if it is, just echo some sort of warning. And then just exit. Then just for my convenience, I'm going to just copy this line before saving and exiting. And now just edit the other initd file. And just paste in the same line. Save and exit. And if you look at git diff right now, you can see that it's just a diff describing adding these lines to these two files. And honestly, I think this is the most important part of the patch I'm going to show. So if you want, you could totally just redirect git diff to just whatever dot diff or whatever dot patch and be totally fine. But if you want to do just one more step, 
First, just make sure that it's safe to do this. So this extra step is just going to be removing the ownership changing Z options. Because honestly, why? So to check if you can do this, just grab dash I for case insensitivity. Carrot Z to find lines that start with D in slash user slash lib slash temp files dot D slash asterisk. And if there's no output, that means that nothing is currently relying on this. So if you want, you can just vim temp files. And looks like this shook me straight to one of the two lines that includes them. Actually, both of the lines are right here. See so yeah, how this, just checking what's valid. Just boop those out. Boink those out. And save and quit. Look at the diff again. And you can see that in addition to what was previously there, now it's also removing the spots that confirm Z options as valid. Or outside of America, it's removing the parts that confirm Z options as valid. So then at this point, just redirect that to a file. And just for convenience later with referencing this, I'm going to include the name of the package, open temp files, in the version 0.2, let's just call it mitigate.patch ls, you can see there it is. And now actually applying this patch is going to require having a local ebuild repo set up. I have a video on that and I seem to recall there being a page in the wiki about that too, so probably just going to link to both of those. And then once you got that set up, just cd into that repo directory and make a new directory under that for sysapps slash open temp files and just add dash pv so that it doesn't complain if sysapps doesn't exist, just makes both and does so verbosely. Do this as root so that you actually have write permissions here. That generally helps. And then just copy the patch file over to the folder you just made for now. And there's actually one subfolder that that's supposed to go in that I just forgot about. So now that I don't need to reference anything in my home directory anymore. I'm just going to switch to root. Probably shouldn't have included the dash because I wanted to stay in that directory, but that's fine. It's easy enough to get back to. So now just going to cd into there for convenience for a sec. Just into sysapps open temp files. Make a directory called files and then just move the patch there. 
And now just go back to the local repo directory and copy over a couple things from the default repo. Actually, no, there's no files for this, so just copy over the ebuild from the default repos. So, wherever the Gen 2 repo is located, in my case it's var db repos gen2 slash sysapps slash open temp files and then open temp files 0.2.ebuild and copy that to sysapps slash open temp files. I'm just going to include dash v just to show that it's doing the thing that I want it to. Now cd back into there and point a text editor at this ebuild you just copied over. And right now the egit repo URI and source URI are pointing at the original open temp files repo. If for whatever reason you want to do this more long term, I wouldn't recommend pointing them to open temp files on the Oberon git yet because it doesn't look like they've really done much aside from changing the readme and it's based on a newer, buggier version, but it's at least worth keeping an eye on. Yeah, for now, better to just stick with these as they are. And then just somewhere in here, just add Patches equals, and then in parentheses, the variable files there, slash, and we have more variables to work with, which are why I suggested putting the package name in there pn for package name dash 0.2 dash I already forgot what I called it mitigate dot patch that was it so yeah just save and quit that and then just while you're in here repo man manifest to make the manifest for it. Not really sure why it's saying ebuild dot not added. I'm hoping that's just related to like past experiments with this or something. But just to make sure this worked. Emerge if you don't already have these in your default portage ops, this is a good place to use verbose and ask. It's also a good candidate for the one-shot flag because this should only be installed as a dependency. I doubt you just actively think, man, I really wish I had a temp files processor. Yeah, then after those flags, just open temp files. Helps if I put the S in there. Then the main thing you want to make sure of is that it says here that it's coming from your local repo. In my case it's replacing the same version from the default repo. In your case, it'll probably be replacing systemd temp files, which as long as you never installed systemd temp files for getting the one-shot flag, 
it should be able to do pretty painlessly. So if everything looks good, then yes, install it. And then it's going to scroll up a bit to check one thing. Okay. So yeah, it does mention that it applied the patch, so that is a good thing. So now if we look at slash Etsy, slash init.d, slash open temp files, let's go with dev first. You can see that the line we added is there. And if we go for setup, the line we added is here too. And if you also did the optional one for just getting rid of the Z or Z options, Looking at this line count, I think it's actually closer to the bottom than it is to the top. Yeah, you can see that neither of these include that option anymore. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you deeply hate System D, hopefully this helped you at least be less vulnerable avoiding it, and if you don't, hopefully this showed you why open temp files was masked. And uh, yeah, have a nice rest of your day.